Welcome to Sunday Online, everyone. It's great that you're joining us here at The Free. My name's Mark and you, as I say, are very welcome. In a moment, we're going to use some songs to help us to worship. But before we do that, it's good just to focus in on who it is that we're worshipping. And uh, hear these words from Psalm 145. It says this, The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises. He's faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. I wonder if, as you tune in today, whether you feel like you've fallen this week. Maybe something that's happened to you, maybe your health, maybe just the way that kind of life is for you at the moment. You feel that you've fallen. The promise here is that God lifts us up. And he goes on to say this, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. And so as we worship together now, as we speak out or sing out the name of the Lord, the promise here is that he comes close. And that's good news, isn't it? So let me pray for us. And then we're going to use these songs to help us to worship. And Father God, thank you for who you are. Thank you that we can call you Father, that you are good. And Lord, I particularly pray for those of us tuning in today who do feel that they've tripped and fallen this week for whatever reason. Maybe it's things that have been done to them, maybe It's the way that life is. Maybe it's choices that we've made. But Father, thank you that you don't question why we've fallen. But what you do do is you come and lift us up. And I pray for my brothers and sisters that you will be lifting them up now. Lift their spirits, I pray. And Father, thank you for the promise as well here that you are near to all who call on you, who call on your name. And as we sing now, Father, as we speak out as we sing out as we call out your name would you come near as we worship you now would you come near and would you let us know that you are near we choose now to be worshippers of you father son and holy spirit for you are good and you are worthy of our praise amen Let's sing together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul. I will keep on 
there's a couple of things that we want to tell you about and share with you. And the first one is that next weekend, the 18th of February, we have a new to the free lunch. And uh, this is a special lunch that we put on uh, for anybody who is, you'll never guess, new to the free, who's maybe over the last few weeks you've been tuning in to Sunday Online, maybe you've even been, been able to pop into one of our gatherings or maybe to our coffee shop and you're just kind of looking at the free and you're wondering you know, how you can feel more at home. Well, the new to the free lunch is perfect for you if that's the case. And I'd love to invite you to book a place or a number of places at that lunch. Come and meet me and Sally some other members of the leadership team and uh, some other people who are also new to the free at this time. And uh, we can tell you how you can really plug into the life of the church here as well. Uh, It's next weekend, so we probably need to know by Wednesday if you're going to come so we can make sure there's enough food and uh, if you've got any particular dietary requirements as well. So uh, if that's for you, book your places now. The other thing that I want to share with you is that this weekend we're having a special focus on Frinton Mission. And now many of you tuning in will know about Frinton Mission. It's been running for over a hundred years in our area. Groups of local churches coming together to bless our community and to share the good news of Jesus with all ages. Well, we're pausing this weekend just to kind of focus in, to pray for Frinton Mission, to think about uh, the coming summer and how God might be nudging us to get involved. And also there's going to be the opportunity to give towards the work of Frinton Mission as well. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in just a few moments. But this video uh, that myself and my wife Liz have made uh, just explains what's going to be happening this summer and also how you can get involved. Hi, I'm Mark and this is Liz and would love to take a moment just to talk to you about Frinton Mission that's going to be happening this summer from the 28th of July until the 4th of August. As always, we've got loads planned for you. We've got activities for kids, we've got activities for young people and of course events for adults too. We're also going to have the tent, which is the focal point for the mission on the Greensward. It's a great venue for our cafe. It's a great venue for live music as well. And of course, at the heart of Frinton Mission is our desire to bless our community and share the love of Jesus. So please be praying. We need your prayers. It's incredible what God does as we pray. So please be praying over the coming days, weeks and months as Frinton Mission gets nearer and maybe take one of our prayer cards away with you today which will help prompt your prayers when you're at home. And we'd love you to consider how you can get involved in Frinton Mission Week itself. If you could volunteer, we would love for you to join part of our team and there's more information about that on our website or you can look out for an email from us if you've been on team before. Sign up for that opens in the spring so get thinking how you can be part of for Intermission 2024. So finally thank you for all your support for Frinton Mission. Your encouragement and your volunteering and your involvement really means a lot to us. So, as we say there in that video, do be thinking, do be praying. Already, I know it's only February, but do be praying about this coming August. How might God be nudging you, prompting you to get involved? And keep your eyes open because in the next few months, we'll be sharing with you how you can apply to be part of the FM team. The other thing I said that we wanted to ask you today is whether you might consider giving towards the work of FM. The last few years, as you will well know, uh, have been difficult. They've put a lot of us under financial strain as the costs of living have increased. And of course, that's hit FM as well. We want to give our town the very best, but hiring in the tent hiring in different entertainers and musicians who come and serve at FM, 
being able to feed people and bless people with teas and coffees and to run the best children's and youth work we possibly can, all costs money. And those costs have gone up. We would love to continue to bless our town in, in the similar way to we've done in recent years. And so we're asking, could you give towards Frinton Mission? I know so many of you have been generous towards FM in the past, but we're asking across all the churches, can people give this February as we seek to put FM on this summer? I'd love you to think and to pray about that. And on the screen now are some details for how you can give. You can drop into the church and give in person and we've got some envelopes that enable you to do that. Or as you can see, you can give online. And uh, if you just follow the details there, that will take you to the giving page on the FM website. One thing I would ask you to do would be to gift aid. If you pay tax, then we can claim back the tax that you've already paid to the government. And so, for example, if you give a pound, we can claim back an extra 25p on that pound. So everything we give goes a little bit further. So bless you. Thank you for your generosity towards Friends and Mission over many years. And thank you for your support this year as well. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk
all of the churches across the area uh, are taking some time to pray for Frinton Mission this year and to um, focus on how we can be involved, how we can support uh, the mission financially uh, with prayer or by volunteering. And uh, here at the Free, we're, we're doing that this week, uh, this Sunday. Uh, and so I'm going to lead us in some prayers which will be prayed uh, right across uh, our town and our area um, as we support and promote for Intermission 2024. So let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you that Frinton Mission has taken place for over a hundred years and that many have come to faith in you because of it. We thank you for the hundreds of people who take part in the mission every year, serving on teams of all kinds to make Jesus known in our community. Please would you prompt us to ask you what our role should be this year. Should we be serving? Should we be praying? Should we be giving? Should we be inviting someone along to one of the events? Some of us will have upfront roles. Others will be serving in the background. We pray that each of, us, each of us will do so with the same attitude as Jesus. Putting each other first, supporting each other, and depending on the Holy Spirit each moment of each day. Father God, we praise you for the tent which provides a natural focus for the mission and which attracts people's attention throughout the week. We thank you too for all the churches who open up their premises to be used for a whole variety of events. We pray for wisdom as thousands of decisions are made during the planning stage. We trust you to bring everything together in the right way and at the right time. We pray for provision of the finances needed. Help us to be generous so that more people can be reached with the gospel. Ultimately, the reason FM exists is to enable people to encounter Jesus and to help them move further along in their journey of faith. We long to see many come to a living faith in Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Lord God, would you prepare the hearts and minds of every child, young person and adult who will come into contact with that week. That when they hear the good news that Jesus loves them and cared enough to die for them, the seed will fall on fertile soil and reap a generous harvest. Father God, help us to be faithful in prayer over the next six months, knowing that the prayers of righteous people are powerful and effective. We pray for your protection over all the churches as we work together once again on this year's mission. Would you guard our unity so that it's by our love for one another that people will know that we are your disciples, Jesus and so that they'll want to become your disciple too. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we'd love to encourage you to continue praying, uh, not just today, but over the days and weeks and months ahead as we prepare uh, for the mission in the first week of August. And to help you do that, we have some little prayer cards uh, which are available um, from the nearest church to you. All of the churches have these in the area. Uh, or if you just contact the office, I'm sure we'll be able to post one out to you. Um, it's just a, a simple reminder of the things that we are um, praying for as we look forward to what God's going to do this year at FM. Spirit of the living God Fall afresh on
fall afresh, fall afresh, fall afresh on me. We're about to continue our series going through the book of Acts, part of our five times five times five reading plan as we read through the New Testament in 2024 together. And I'm delighted uh, that Ron Day is going to be sharing some thoughts with us uh, on his some passages in Acts 11 and Acts 13 as well. Ron is the former minister of Histon Baptist Church near Cambridge, and uh, he's also a lecturer at Spurgeon's Bible College in London. And he's a very gifted man, gifted communicator, very wise as well. So I know you're going to appreciate what he shares with us. Before I hand over to Ron, I'm going to read some of the Bible to us. So if you've got a Bible there, I'd love you to turn to Acts chapter 11 and we're going to read verses 1 to 18 and then we're going to flick over the page and read Acts 13, 1 to 3. And it says this, The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticised him and said, you went to the house of an uncircumcised man and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord, nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times. And then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, 
They had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. And over the page to Acts 13, verses 1 to 3. Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Well, hello, everyone. It would be useful if you have Acts 10 to 14 open before you. It would be even more useful if you have read it. So if you haven't, pause the video and do it now. Acts 10 to 14 is all about the kingdom. Now, Acts 10 to 14 is part of Acts, which is part of Luke's gospel. This is part two, what Jesus continued to do by the Holy Spirit working through the church. That's clear in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. So this is part two, and it has a consistency because it's about the kingdom of God. They all knew of the kingdom of God. It is the realm where God is king, where his will is done, where he determines the rules, where his ways are right, where he determines who may enter and on what grounds. There is no room for other opinions. And they all preached it. John the Baptist preached it. The kingdom of God is near. Jesus preached it. Once he was baptized, that was the gospel, the good news. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, says Matthew. And it's where the apostles also preached the same message. They weren't preaching something different. They all said the same thing. Repent, change direction, because God's kingdom is near and you are going to miss it if you don't repent. Now, the mission of God is to get people into the kingdom of God. And in Acts, you get the Holy Spirit driving the mission of God. The kingdom of God is here. You can enter through Christ, the Messiah. That was the message that went out through the church. And the church were going to be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, up comes Pentecost and 3,000 are added to the church in one day. Then later on, the church grows to 5,000. And by the start of chapter 10, Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria have all been reached to some extent. They've been challenged with this good news of the kingdom. You can come in through Jesus. And if God waited for the church until the church was ready, I think they'd still be in Jerusalem. Acts tells us that God was working and God was speaking because that's what God does. He works and he speaks. And in these chapters, you see that God works through the church to reach people. And he works through people to bring them in outside of the church. Peter is on the inside, being inspired by the Holy Spirit to reach out. Cornelius is on the outside, seeking something, and God inspires him to reach in. Often we think that evangelism is a one-way street, that we have to go out, but it's not. God is at work in people, those that we reach out to already. Now, Peter and Cornelius come together. Peter speaks, Cornelius receives the Holy Spirit, and another group of people join the kingdom of God through Christ the door. And Peter reacts to it, saying, well, we better baptize them since they have the Holy Spirit already, just like us. And when God speaks, he speaks to individuals like Peter. And he speaks to churches who are comfortable he speaks to the Jerusalem church in chapter 11. And they are gobsmacked that God doesn't use 
their ways. It's a change of direction for everyone. For the church who thought that evangelism was better done their way. And for those coming in, they still had to repent to change their way so that it led to life. Next we come to Antioch, even further away from Jerusalem, about 350 miles north, beyond Samaria. It's on the Syria-Turkey border, where some Christians ran away when Stephen was martyred. They settled and met as a church, spreading the good news that Jesus was the Messiah, and therefore the kingdom of God was open through him. But God inspired some to preach to Gentiles there as well. And there were more converts, and Jerusalem sends Barnabas to see what's going on, and wondering if the church is getting a bit dodgy. And Barnabas sees that it's a work of the Holy Spirit driving the mission of God. He also sees they need teaching in the ways of the kingdom of God. So he sends for Saul, the converted Pharisee, and he joins their leadership team. A year later, we the church in Antioch finds that God is a challenging God. And God speaks about the mission of God. I want 40% of your golden leadership and teaching team for mission, Paul and Barnabas. And they go and they preach. And people are drawn into the kingdom by the Spirit of God working through them. They set up mini churches saying, you have the Holy Spirit, work it out and we'll pray for you. They move across Cyprus, then over Turkey and visit another Antioch, Iconium, Lystra and Derbe. And in each place, God has been preparing the way so disciples were made and they were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. That's in chapter 13 at the end. But there's deep opposition in those communities as well. And they're stoned and chased out. So they retrace their steps in Turkey before going back to Antioch, their home church. And they report all that God had done through them and how he had opened up the door of faith for the Gentiles. God is a challenging God. And his challenge is this, for unbelievers to come into the kingdom of God, for individuals to listen to the voice of God and for churches to engage in the mission of God. And that's what he does. You get what's going on? And the question that we draw from this is, are we ready for God's mission? You see, God's pace of mission is always ahead of ours. We think of other things that we need to do. The church is never ready for mission, for outreach, for the pace of God in seeking the lost. But he's working ahead of us, preparing the way in the hearts of people and minds of people. He's working in some of us now, inspiring us to reach out to others. But sometimes we just want to go slower to consolidate, to look after widows, to be good stewards of buildings. And all these are good things. But the Holy Spirit wants your family, your friends, your neighbors to be part of the kingdom. And he's working in them right now to bring them to a point of encounter. And he's asking, who will go? Could you be the one who is ready to share your story of how you encounter the living God through Jesus. Or maybe you're one of those people that have never actually entered the kingdom of God, where God rules. You'd be happy to come to church and you believe you're okay because you believe Jesus died for you and rose again, but there's still something missing and you've held back. You've never said, I surrender to you. You are my king. Your will, not mine, be done. Maybe you've entered the kingdom, but still want to be in charge. All I can say is good luck with that. There's only one king in the kingdom of heaven. And surrendered to him is the making of you. It's a place of peace and joy and comfort and blessing that you've always been looking for. It's where you fit in. It's where you really are under all that other stuff. 
It's where gifts are given. It's where challenges are given and taken up. It's where relationships deepen. It's where miracles happen. It's where ultimate purpose is found. The early church turned the world upside down with the message, the kingdom of God is near. You can enter it if you change direction and come through the door of Jesus Christ, Redeemer and Lord. And he wants this church to start in Printon and do the same. He wants you to be part of his team, maybe as one who is sent out like Paul and Barnabas, or maybe as one who looks after the widows and orphans and teaching at home. But the question is, will you say, I surrender, your will be done? That's what's going on in Acts. And we get the story about those who say, your will be done and follow it.
So thank you so much for joining us for Sunday Online this week. I hope uh, that you've been blessed. I hope you felt the Lord speak to you. And as always, do get in touch. Let us know uh, what's happening with your life, how we can be supporting, praying you, what the Lord is speaking to you about as well. Let me nudge you once again about the new to the free lunch, if that's for you. And uh, let me encourage you to be thinking and praying about Frinton Mission and your involvement there. God bless you all.